Joining us now, he's no stranger. We're in Chicago, is uh, former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich. All right, a lot of platitudes, very expected, great crowd reaction. The conventions in general, they're all the same in that regard. However, there's something very different going on here. And that is where I was going with my first question. The Kamala Harris, who has taken the most radical positions on energy, on immigration, on law and order, on issues involving the economy and America's place in the world, and the Kamala Harris they're trying to remake before our very eyes, will they be able to pull that off? Well, you know, that's why I think the speech she gave <clears throat> on Friday is so un un unbelievable. They want to move her to the center. <clears throat> they want her to eat everyday food like normal people. They want her to come out with platitudes. Fine. And now that's a strategy. But then on Friday, she gets up and she gives the most radical economic speech ever given by a candidate for president, a nominee for president, a speech which has big government socialism all the way through it, even though only 16% of the country favors big government socialism, a speech which offers a trillion seven hundred billion dollars in additional spending, even though 80% of the American people believe that that kind of spending guarantees more inflation. I mean, you, get, you can't understand up here what's the, what, what's the brain that says the Friday before the convention, let's go out and be absurdly radical, so radical that the New York Times and the, and the Washington Post attack the speech. And then could turn around and say, you know, we're really not that kind of person. I, I predict that the Friday economic speech, in the end, will play a bigger role in this campaign than her acceptance speech Thursday, Thursday night. And she'll never be able to get away from it. Okay, so really, two uh, that that was a first policy speech. Th there's nothing on her website that describes what her views are, or policies are, or what she's campaigning on, uh, which in and of itself is extremely odd. But she did make one other decision, and that was her choice for VP. And she picked the Bernie Sanders of governors. I mean, here you have a governor that wants legal driver's licenses for illegals, like Kamala supports free health care, free housing education and even a college education. Here's a guy that wouldn't lift a finger as Minneapolis was burning to the ground and and literally his family opened up the, the windows to their home so they could smell burning rubber during the rioting in the summer of 2020. Did nothing to really stop it. And on energy, they're both against fracking and drilling. I mean, huge in terms of the economy, and both big supporters of the Green New Deal. Kamala Harris co-sponsored the Green New Deal in the U.S. Senate. She sponsored uh, Medicare for All, along with Bernie Sanders on both bills that would eliminate private health insurance. The uh, uh, One last point. John McLaughlin pointed out, most Americans are unaware of all of these radical positions. We're not going to hear any of them this week. So that's a challenge, is it not, for the Trump campaign? Well, it's only a challenge if, if they go to sleep and forget they're in an election. Look, this is the easiest campaign since Michael Dukakis was 17 points ahead in 1988 at the end of the Democratic Convention. And then as people learned how radical he was, he just melted every week and ended up losing by eight points. One out of every four Americans switched their vote in 1988 from Dukakis to George H.W. Bush. So just one, one factoid. Waltz and, and, and Congressman Comer, to his credit, has begun to pick this up. Waltz took over 30 student groups to communist China, mostly paid for by the Chinese communist government. Now, to what degree is Waltz's collectivism and, as one person described it, his Maoist tendencies, to what extent was he going to China because they were paying for it, and to what extent was he going to China because he really is that radical and that far to the left. And if you look at how anti-Catholic he was during COVID, how much he tightened down the state, but by the way, allowed Mall of the Americas to keep selling. They, they described it uh, as retail therapy. Uh, this is a guy who's very scary and very dangerous. He's actually to the left of Kamala, which you wouldn't think is easy.
Uh, and well, I think he, she picked him, frankly, because the governor of Pennsylvania is Jewish, and she just couldn't put Shapiro on the ticket given what's let, happening let, outside let, the convention hall. Let me add a couple other things. No restrictions, either one of them, on abortion. Feminine products and boys' bathrooms in school. Gender, quote, affirming care without parental notification or consent. Um, California, Minnesota, I mean, that doesn't seem in sync with the values in the middle of the country and the Sun Belt and the Midwest where this, this election is likely going to be fought. Last word. Well, I think when people learn that while Walsh was governor, at least eight babies died on the table without any medical care because he is so radical that he believes not only an abortion on the last day, but he believes you should allow babies to die if the parents decide they don't want them. Uh, this guy is literally to the left of Harris, and Harris is to the left of Sander, Bernie Sanders. Yeah. All right. Speaker Gingrich, we love having you. Thank you so much for being with us.